What we see shapes our perception of reality. The perspective is that, you know, these people can't do this or these people aren't capable of doing this. It's just a downward spiral. Essentially, we just kind of throw, throw people with disabilities out. Each year, over 8 million babies are born with a serious birth defect. Only 3.2 million of those children will live past five years of age and will be left with a disability. It's a young girl named Lauren. She went to camp, but it was hard for her. Like, she couldn't do all the things that normal campers could do. And Cindy asked her, if you could make a camp, what would it be? And Lauren said, I just want to be normal. Like, I wouldn't want people to look at me differently. So that short documentary showed you something that might have influenced your perception of reality. Let's break this clip down. It opens with a man saying, the perspective is that these people can't do this, or these people aren't capable of doing this. It's just a downward spiral. Essentially, we just sort of throw people with disabilities out. It opens with hopelessness. Hopelessness, loneliness, exclusion are all introduced as the normal experience for people with disabilities. Then a voiceover. Each year, over 8 million babies are born with a serious birth defect. Over 3.2 million of those babies will live past five years of age and will be left with a disability. The filmmaker shifts the focus to heartbreak to emotionally engage you, further conditioning you to believe that people with disabilities are tragic or pitiful, not to even mention that the term birth defect is so outdated and offensive. When this camper Lauren was asked what she wanted, she said, I just want to be normal. Like I wouldn't want anyone to look at me any differently. Except the filmmaker has built up everything to guarantee that you do look at her differently. The filmmaker's intent was to change your perspective of disability, but the sad music, home video clips, talking about throwing people out, and that statistic, all lead you to believe she isn't normal. In fact, it's reinforcing the idea that people with disabilities are different. Okay, so you probably think that I am being really, really harsh on that filmmaker, but I'm pretty comfortable critiquing her because I am that filmmaker. I made that video when I was in high school and I was focused on winning awards and getting views, and it did. It won awards from the Mid-American Emmy Committee and others, but it's ironic because the thing I was most praised for is now the thing that I see as problematic. In my attempt to get it right, I got it wrong, and in the end, I reinforced the very perspective I wanted to tear down. This clip paints a picture consistent with what we're used to seeing in media. We've come to expect poor representation, even when it means well. As with any critique, it's important to highlight the people and organizations working to create better representation, so who can we look to as our example going forward? One of the major television broadcasters in the UK, Channel 4, has done a great job of changing mainstream perceptions of diversity. They've become a leader in integrating disability into television. First and foremost, with the London 2012 Paralympics, they broadcast them on television with a huge mass-marketed campaign. People with disabilities were front and center. Live coverage, on-site interviews, they even had this nighttime recap program that I think was geniusly titled The Last Leg. Yeah, it's a good one, right? <laughs> British viewers saw the Paralympics covered in a way that was parallel to Olympic coverage. On the other hand, there was so little mainstream media attention in the US that most Americans probably couldn't have even told you when the Paralympics were happening. Channel 4 searched for people with disabilities to perform and transform the games. They made them their talent, they hired them and trained them to be television professionals. People with disabilities were in front of and behind the scenes controlling the narrative of the Paralympics. 
So that year, 2012, Channel 4 aired over 400 hours of coverage of the Paralympic Games, and 150 of those were during prime time. That same year, NBC only aired five and a half hours of coverage total. And two of those hours were completely after the games were over. The most revolutionary thing that Channel 4 did was they took this group of employees who they had invested a lot in, and they integrated them into other areas of television after the Paralympics. They were on comedy programs, children's shows, documentary series, as writers, editors, graphic designers, presenters. They created a program for people with disabilities to break into the television industry. That show, The Last Leg, was so popular that it's still on air almost six years later. And 2016 was Channel 4's Year of Disability. This is significant because most of this programming after the Paralympics had nothing to do with disabilities. There were people with disabilities and they were creating television, but it wasn't necessarily linked to that aspect of their identity. I, as a filmmaker, fed off of and fed into your preconceived notions. What Channel 4 did was interrupting your expectations, your perception of reality. They demonstrated how people with disabilities can create and control their narrative in media. Why does representation in media matter so much? Because what we see on screen sticks with us. Media diversity expert Darnell Hunt explained, we're pretty confident the more TV you watch, the more media you consume, the more likely it is that media, almost like radiation, builds up. And the accumulated effect is to make you feel that what you're seeing is somewhat normal. What we see, we interpret as normal. The more you see it, the more you believe it. When you were a kid and you turned on the TV and saw someone who looked like you or went through something you did, you felt less alone. We feel like how we look, what we experience, what we feel is valid. We felt empowered. What we don't see, we leave out from normal. People who aren't seeing themselves represented feel erased. Television researcher George Gerbner called this symbolic annihilation. This is what happens when we don't see representations of ourselves on screen. We become irrelevant. When someone with a disability watches a video like the one that I made in high school, they see their social and economic opportunities cut short, their experience invalidated. What we show can be a tool to explore people who don't share our experiences. In words borrowed from my best friend, Michelle Obama, for so many people, television and movies may be the only way they understand people who aren't like them. When someone who doesn't think of themselves as disabled sees someone with a disability on screen, they are able to empathize with that person, that identity, in a way they couldn't before. In the age of iPhones, we're all creators. As creators, even when we mean well, we can misrepresent people and stories. We need the whole collection of perspectives and experiences driving the narrative because when we see something, it sticks with us. Including everyone on their own terms gives people the opportunity to elevate from the footnotes to shape their story and ours. <laughs>